everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be doing a time lapse tutorial on how I drew this ear. Now I've done this ear because this is an ear that I've not covered on my page um, yet um, and this is a tipped ear so I'm going to kind of just describe overall how I've gone about creating this ear. If you've got any questions don't forget you can leave them down below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. So when it comes to drawing ears to like this tipped ear, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start at the very top where the ear itself is tipped. As usual, I'm going in with my base layer of warm grey one. I'm then using the Payne's grey, the dark sepia, and then finally the black pencil to create the blacked fur within this dog. Now this is a smooth collie. It's part of a series that I'm working on, a vulnerable breed. Now remember, because it's black fur, there's going to be a lot of layers. I'm going to keep building up and building up those layers till I get that really dark fur. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to start creating the outside of the ear. I want to get the shape of the ear correct. So this is going to be by focusing on both sides of the ear, mapping in those shapes, and I'm following the black fur on this ear. So when you're doing ears like this, if they've got any of the darker markings or just markings, something that you can follow as point of references, you want to follow those points because that will help give you the shape of the ear and just something for you to focus on when it comes to creating the rest of the ear. I'm also making sure that I'm mapping all the fur, the fur that's connecting the head and the ear together. This is because as we come to doing the inside of the ear, it's more skin-like than fur-like. So I want these fur lines to be more or less drawn in. We will draw in extra fur lines as the skin goes in, but I've got that general shape again. Again, everything is down to these general shapes and just wanting to have those points of references that are really going to help us build up the rest of the ear. Now to do this, I'm building up that black fur and I'm using the highlights. And then what I'm going to do is, is I've come in with the uh, tanned fur. Again, I'm following that fur direction. No matter what I'm doing on the piece, fur direction is still important, especially when it comes to these tipped ears. We want it to look like the ear itself is tipped. And again, I'm kind of working from the outside of the ear to the inner ear. Now, we're going to start working on the skin. So I'm going to start coming in with my uh, warm grey one as a base layer. The buff titanium from the Caran d'Ache Luminance I've used as the base layer for the tanned coloured fur. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sticking to my brown ochres, my Venetian red, my cinnamon in the polychromos range to create those skin-like tones. I'm also adding in hints of the sanguine and the light red violet because we still have bits of fur within the inner ear. So as you're building this up, you really want to focus on the structure of the ear. The structure of the ear, you will have some of the veins showing. You'll have little areas that are raised, areas that are further back. And to do this, you're just going to build up your darks very lightly. I use circular motions to help do the smoothness of this area. And the darker shadows will help create that those lumps, those bumps, those veins. I also find that by using my luminance pencils over the top, in circular motions again, it really helps to give you that smooth effect, which makes it look like skin rather than fur. Remember, because we're not doing fur, I'm not really now focusing too much on the fur direction. I'm focusing on getting that smooth look to the fur. Skin, sorry. <laughs> I said fur too many times already. Again, this part takes a lot of layers. I'm really methodical. I focus section by section. So I'm working on this left-hand side because it's higher up than the right-hand side of the ear. And I'm just going to use my Caran d'Ache Pablo gra uh, Granite Rose. I find this colour really useful for ears and tongues. And that I use for blending. And then any areas that I want really, really smooth, I'm going in with that Caran d'Ache Titanium uh, buff titanium from the luminance range once again just to help smooth it out and then as i build up all the colors i'm just going back and forth adding in any fur that i need to add in over the top any other lines any details and remember i like a lot of detail within my work so it is just back and forth till i get the effect that i am after Now within the ear, I also find that there's areas that are quite colder in colour. So I come in with any blue tones, my cold greys, any of the very pale luminance colours like the silver grey. 
And as I come in across now into this middle section, it is a lot cooler in colour. So I can see those blues. So I'm actually going to use the cold grey one as the base layer this time. And now I'm building up this section of the ear where I can see this fold within the ear. And to do this, I'm going to build up the shadows. I'm using the light red violet mixed with the sanguine, the raw umber and the brown ochre. Again, these colours will vary depending on the ear you're drawing, the reference that you're using. Um, but these were just the colours that I could see within this ear. Now, because we've got a tipped ear, we need to make sure that we get in that shadow. We want that black part of the ear that we drew in first to look like it is above the skin within the inside of the ear. I don't want it to be black because this shadow isn't black. So I'm actually going in with like a dark red mixed with maybe a brown, a blue, just to give a shadow and also just to help give that hint that the ear is obviously an ear that we're drawing the inner ear of the ear. Again, as I build up this part of the ear, I'm building it up section by section, mapping in any of those details, those veins, the lumps, the bumps. An ear isn't just a smooth surface. You have all the inner folds within the ear. So that's where your shading really comes in. Don't rush when it comes to drawing ears like this. Just take your time. It'll all come together. Remember, like I say, there's no rush. A piece comes together as quick as you want it to. And now what you're going to see is you're just going to see me build up the ear over time. Um, lots of colours, lots of different layers, lots of smoothing out. I want it to be nice and smooth. Lots of circular motions, lots of blending. Um, but yeah, I hope this has helped. I may do a proper in-depth tutorial very, very soon on an ear like this. Any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. And I will uh, let you finish the time lapse in peace. Okay, I know I said I was going to leave you in peace, but I've just noticed something I need to chat to you about. So as I've done this skin within this middle of the ear, what you could see earlier on was that I'm then coming back in with those colours that I've used within the fur, so that tan fur, and I'm then using the fur direction to build up the fur. We want that tan fur, the black fur, to look like it is overlapping the skin. So here you can see me doing it again. I'm just building it back and forth. So that it looks natural. We haven't got a harsh line. The fur looks blended. The ear looks blended. Now with this, this is drawn on Fabrian Artisco Hot Press Watercolour Paper, which is my paper of choice. So I am going over and over again with layers because I really want it to look smooth. I want those darks to be dark, the lights to be light. And obviously I want my fur to look natural. So here you can see I'm going in and adding the rest of this black fur and you can see that I start following that fur direction just building over the top of the layers I've already mapped in just really help build up that natural looking ear. Again, as I always say, that fur direction is really important. So I'm constantly checking back on my reference photo. And now that I'm adding in these darker parts of the fur, I'm coming in and building up the tones and values on the fur within the head as well to make sure it all balances and looks natural. And as you can see, since I did the uh, time lapse, we've now got two ears in place. I followed the same technique with this ear, drew in the larger tipped point, worked my way around from the outside to the inner area. So and the again, techniques used in this video are similar to how I would do a pricked ear. ear. Folded ears are slightly different, they're just more focusing on the fur direction than anything else. But I hope this has helped and I will see you all very soon for the next tutorial, whether it's a full tutorial or a time lapse. I'm also launching a Patreon next month, so keep your eyes out for a video on further detail. I may also do a tutorial from this piece on the nose or the mouth. Um, but yeah, I will chat to you all very soon. Bye everybody.